It's very rarely that I read a Guardian newspaper article and fully agree with it. But I've just read one by Simon Jenkins, which is about the escalation of the of the war in Ukraine and the fact that there's no strategic advantage to it whatsoever. And believe you me, I'm no fan of Simon Jenkins or his writing. But when somebody calls it right, you've got to give them credit where credit's due. Jeremy Corbyn wrote a similar piece. Yes, again, I, I totally disagreed with, with what he said about Israel and uh, other areas of the Middle East. But when it comes to Russia, I have to agree with him. Not because I'm a coward, not because I'm a traitor, quite the opposite, because I actually care deeply about our country, our young people not getting dragged into a war in Ukraine. And more than that, I am also acutely aware as a child of the Cold War, I served in the British Army in the last years of the Cold War. I'm, I'm well aware of what was at stake if a war, a nuclear war with Russia had exploded, or a nuclear war with the Soviet Union, as it was called then, had exploded onto the world stage. And... The problem is we've got a generation of politicians now that don't have a clue. They have no muscle memory of the Cold War. They think that they can fire missiles into a nuclear state and expect that nuclear state to sit on its hands and say, oh, well, we, I don't want a third world war. I don't want to use my nukes, so I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. That's not the way it works with someone like Putin. And we've got to realise he's an extremely dangerous man. I said it the other day. If you're negotiating, um, a hostage negotiator, and he has a gun to your family's head, you don't go in there shouting at him and swearing at him and, and telling telling him what an evil, vile person he is and then punch him in the face and expect him not to shoot your family. The reality is what needs to happen in Ukraine between Ukraine and Russia is a peace process to bring this horrible, disgusting war to an end. Does it mean that Ukraine may have to cede some territory because of pragmatism? Unfortunately, yes. As I said before, the, the answer to Ukraine is a slow attritional war, not throwing men into a meat grinder, but training men uh, very much in the way that the SOE were trained in the Second World War so that they can carry out deep, um, deep strike operations that are nothing to do with the West. They're totally uh, contained by Ukraine, promoted by Ukraine and run by Ukraine. If we believe what the, the fast jet... Um, pilot guy Tim said yesterday on his YouTube channel and he, he should know because he used to fly Tornado, was it GR6 or GR7, the, the Tornadoes that carried the Storm Shadow missiles. He said that those missiles cannot be fired except by British aircraft. That's what he said. I'm not an expert. I'm not a pilot, but that's what he said. So Simon Jenkins makes some very good points. He says there's no strategic advantage to what the West are doing in firing these missiles deep into Russian territory. In fact, all it is doing is going to stir up an even bigger response from Russia against Ukraine. So could could Russia use a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. It's just used a ballistic missile. That was a massive message to the West. Look what I can do. And look how quickly it can hit a target. And look how accurate it is. That's what Putin was doing. He wasn't even probably trying to kill a whole lot of people. He was just saying, that's what I can do. And if I put a nuclear warhead on it, it can hit London. It can hit Paris. It can hit Berlin and it can hit Washington, D.C. And the other thing we've got to realise is, again, we're not dealing with a stable person in Putin. We're dealing with someone who's inherently unstable, extremely unpredictable, and who, to be brutally honest, despite him being an evil, vile dictator, we should have probably showed him a little bit of respect, and we haven't. There should be diplomatic channels, there should be people talking. As far as I know, there's no diplomatic... Um, chatter going between Moscow and the USA. Now, maybe there's some back channels and there's some stuff going on quietly, but it seems to me that we're playing a massive game of Russian roulette, except in this game of Russian roulette, there's five bullets in the gun. That's the potential for disaster in this. And remember, unintended consequences. If Putin launches an ICBM and if it strays off its orbit or goes in a slightly different direction to where he wants it to go, which isn't beyond the realms of possibility, it's unlikely, but it could happen. Or if NATO early warning systems believe it's targeting Poland, what happens then? What happens? What does NATO do? Does NATO launch the full mother load on Russia? These are questions, these are very, very serious questions that none of our lightweight, pathetic, weak leaders are asking. They're just following... Putin, who is like, I mean, the, the irony is Putin is like one of the old communist leaders, like 
Andropov or Brezhnev. He's he's pretty much brain dead. How can he make any decisions about what missiles to launch and where them to where to launch them? It's absolutely ridiculous. I think there's people in America that wanted to impeach Biden. And of course, any talk like this, you're straight away accused of being a traitor and a, and a coward and, and all the rest of it. There's a lot of military men I'm really embarrassed about. Ingram, seeing him on the TV, this intelligence guy, um, waffling on as if there's, no, you know, there's nothing to see here. There's no danger from this. There is danger. I hope I'm wrong. I sincerely hope I'm wrong and that this ends well. And it all quietens down and people calm down and Trump gets into power and actually bangs some heads together between Russia and Ukraine and gets a peace process going. Because that's what's needed. And as of nuclear weapons, uh, I understand the doctrine. I was speaking to a guy earlier on today that actually worked on nuclear weapons during the Cold War. I understand the whole idea of deterrent. I understand that once one, once a nation's got them, it's very difficult to stop them having them. But, but the reality is something needs to be done about nuclear weapons. Because having weapons that can wipe out the whole of humanity and the whole of Western civilization is insane. It's evil, it's demonic, it's satanic, it's against God, and it needs to stop. Anyway, rant over. See you all soon, hopefully.